So I know sometimes it's easy to face a new year with mixed feelings, especially after last year. 2022 began with lots of uncertainty, fear, and tribulation. 22 was a year of major change in valleys. God saw us through each one, and he gave us major victories. One of them is sitting up here today. However, there's gratitude that we're still here, but there can be anxiety, anxiety about what the new year will hold. Maybe you hope things from last year would have been resolved, relationships restored, bodies healed, dreams made real. What the heck was that? Instead, we may, I don't know what that was. Instead, we may be filled with anxiety, fear, discouragement, disappointment, frustration, or weariness. We want to dare to hope that things will turn around, doors will open, failures won't define us, and that this, year we, this new year will be one of joy, peace, and hope. But it's hard to hope when you feel hopeless. I want to encourage you to take the pressure off of yourself and those around you. Instead, put your hope and trust in Jesus. Amen. We know that he is with us and he is for us. Yes. He's always faithful. Amen. We can step into 2023 with boldness because Jesus is already there. Right. He has gone before us. If he is a prize, we will not be disappointed. Step into this year full of faith, and I know you don't know what this year holds, but you can know that Jesus is in it. There are a lot of things we don't know, but I know that without faith, it's impossible to please him. I know that God is good, and he does good. I know that God is in control, and nothing takes him by surprise. I know that God is with us, for us, and loves us. I know that if he promised it, he will do it. I know that he loves us beyond what we could ask or think. I know that Jesus died on an old rugged cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose again the third day, ascended to his Father in heaven, and I know that he is coming back someday. Although there are things that I don't know, the things that I do know have me pumped up, fired up, and ready to serve. I'm believing this year will be a year of signs, wonders, blessings, and miracles. If God has promised it, then be ready to believe him for it. Let's want him and let's seek him this year. I want the blessings and miracles he has for us in this church this year. And speaking of this church, we're going to step into a different point just for a minute. I want to tell you that we love you. We thank God for you. You've stuck by us through the worst. You've celebrated with us through the best. Dad, Drew, and I are human just like you. And just like you, we have human emotions. We are not immune to the devil's attacks because we're children of God. But because we are children of God, we have a hope, a help, and a promise. The beginning of last year started with difficulty, and then the last two weeks of last year were a little bit challenging. From COVID and squirts, he needs your prayers. He's um, got some illness going on, <coughs> amongst other things. Um, so I'm telling you this to tell you this. Pray for your pastor. Pray for this church. Pray for your church family. And this isn't geared toward anybody. It's just what the Lord has given me. So I'm going to sound a little sassy, but you remember I was not up here for two weeks, so I got a little bit of sass in me. <laughs> if you think it's directed to you, take it up with the Lord because he must be speaking to you. Sadly, many people in this world see their church like a restaurant that they select based on their preferences. And if the menu changes a little bit, they might leave or throw a tantrum. Unless we see our church as an extension of our family, we've got our perspective drastically wrong. When you got saved, you were born again into this family. Each person in this room is your sibling through your Savior. Amen. This church is a band of believers bonded through the blood of Jesus. We are seeking to serve our Savior. We pray for each other, we love each other, and we are here for one another. Let it be known now, if it isn't already known, from the pastor to the pastor's son to the pastor's daughter to the ones that run the computer, the sound, the camera, the ones that sing, the counters, the ones that work with the children, the ones that clean, the ones in the compassion ministry, the ones that tithe, the ones that serve in any way possible, we are all doing our best to serve God, this church, and the people in this world. Each person that is involved works extra hard to make sure that you're blessed. My original offer still stands. If you can do it better, then step up and do it. <laughs> if you can't get over it, then remember how much you've done that God has forgiven. If you're holding a grudge and harboring hurt, then you're docked in the bay of disobedience. The baggage of bitterness is heavy. 
give it to God. Amen. Forgive, move on, and serve with passion. We have work to do. We have a Savior to serve, and we have a calling to fulfill. We don't have time for the devil's annex and attacks. We have souls to win and hearts to bless. We need each other. Amen. Now, back to my main speech. That was a little extra for you. <laughs> my prayer for you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> My prayer for you is that you will stir up the measure of faith that you've been given and that you will believe God, not believe that he exists. I mean that you will believe his word, his promises, and affirmations. As we begin this new year, we are often unable to take the next step because we're so busy rehashing past missteps. We are consumed with pain, heartbreak, guilt, embarrassment, hopelessness, shame, loneliness, doubt, re rejection, or abandonment, and we become paralyzed by fear. No one wants to relive those places or those emotions. It's understandable, but it's also a ploy of Satan to keep you stuck in the past and render you useless for the kingdom. You can't go forward when you're stuck in reverse. Put that puppy in drive and up your drive for the kingdom. I know that most of us like knowing and understanding the why behind things, but if there's one lesson I've had to learn, it's this. There will always be situations we can't explain. Those situations when we have to walk by faith and not by sight, when we have to trust God with all our hearts and lean not into our own understanding. I have those in my own life. When we've been hurt, when we've been betrayed, when we failed, things didn't go as we had planned or expected. When people we have loved have died way too soon. When storms have come, when sickness has come, when dad's health and life were in peril and it looked bleak. In all those times, we had to keep trusting in the character of God. We've had to trust that there was a reason and that God's ways are higher than ours. We've had to be still and know that he is God. We've had to seek his face. We've had to remember the promises given to us in his word. We've had to embrace the mystery of faith. And we've had to know that God was going to bring hope to the hopeless, light to the darkness, and blessings in the mess. We've had to accept that just like Paul wrote to the Corinthians, there will always be things we may never see clearly on this side of eternity and that as long as I'm on this earth, there will always be things I can only understand partially. There will always be things we may not understand. There will be questions for which you and I will never have the answers. Still, God wants us to ask our questions. It's a common misconception that God is offended by being asked why things happen. That is not true. He wants us to dare to believe that there's no question too big for him. There's nothing, there's nothing we can ask that will shock him. Going to God with our questions is part of how we make our faith our own. It's how we draw near to him and get to know him more. It's how we learn to stay anchored even when the winds are blowing and the waves are raging. But be mindful of the attitude with which you're asking. When doubts and questions fill our minds, God invites us to come to him. What can you bring to God today? It can be hard to stay anchored to Jesus while wrestling with honest questions and emotions harder still when it feels like we're not getting any answers. But digging our anchor in deeper and deeper is how we keep ourselves from becoming untethered to our faith. When you feel pulled in a million different directions, how do you keep your focus on Jesus? For many of us, it is our heart's desire to stay anchored, but with all that's going on in the world and our lives, it can be easy to get distracted, to allow the currents of life to send us drifting. And when we begin to drift in any area of our life, it is often subtle. Barely detectable, it's, like, it's not a deliberate step we take, but more like a gradual slip. Like Casting Crown saying, it's a slow fade. We don't drift because we aren't strong or haven't walked with Christ for many years. It just happens, but once it does, if we don't look up and check our markers, we'll be taken to places we never wanted to go. Emotionally, physically, relationally, and spiritually. But the good news is, Jesus always offers a way back. He is our way, the truth, and our guiding light. We have a Heavenly Father who is eager to help us. He's always watching, always ready. And He wants to bring us back from where we've drifted to where we need to be. Yeah. The antidote to drifting is to anchor ourselves to Jesus, keep our eyes focused on Him, stay anchored, stay focused, and trust that He will always calm the storm. Amen. So as this new year begins, I'm praying for you to focus forward on Him instead of in the rearview mirror of past hurts, failures, and mistakes. It's going to take discipline, courage, focus, strength, and commitment. But with Jesus, you can do it. Amen. As this new year begins, I'm praying for you to increase in your hunger and thirst for servitude and righteousness. 
As this new year begins, I'm praying for you to be blessed beyond your wildest imagination. As this new year begins, I'm praying for growth at GBC, for faithfulness of the people, and for a servant's heart for this congregation. As this new year begins, I'm praying for God to increase our borders. I'm praying for growth. I'm praying for God to be glorified in our words and actions. I'm praying for a sweet spirit, loving smiles. Hold on, excuse me there. And open arms to be, to always be here. I'm praying for God to be praised in this place. I'm praying that you remember that Jesus is with you, Jesus is for you, Jesus is worthy, and he will carry you. You have the power of the Almighty God on your side, and you have a church family that thinks that you are the bee's knees. Getting it right. Have you ever been in a position in life that you can't just seem to get things right? I mean, whether it's in your life, whether it's your job, whether it's in your hobbies or whatever you're doing, you just can't seem to get it right. I think we've all had those places, haven't we? But uh, I'm in Colossians 2, 6 and 7 today as we are now officially into 2023. We can't live in the past. We learn from it and we go forward. The letter to the Colossians that Paul was writing deals with the problems of apathy and lack of vitality for the Christians. You know, we can get in that place that we lack vitality. Just seems like we don't have that spiritual charge that we had when we were first saved. Now, whose fault is that? It's not God's, is it? For he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the fact that we lose our focus. We lose our vitality. We, leave, we lose that energy. We lose that concentration or that look, look that we have to Christ. Paul is putting the attention of the church to the true secret to a turnaround life. Or let's say it this way. Not so much a turnaround life. Let's call it a turn on life. Because you remember when you're saved, boy, you have such energy for Jesus. You're just reading your Bible. You were serving God. You said, preacher, I expected this this morning. I'm glad you expected it because you're going to get it. We need that. And we need to get out of the place of losing our focus on the Lord and getting complacent. I'm going to tell you, the true secret is discover the Christ within you. That's the secret of a turned on life. You've got to determine today and discover and live in the Christ that lives within you. Now, when you got saved, Christ came and took up his abode with you and in you through the Spirit of God. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Paul had already declared, as he declared, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you live in that hope today or are you controlled by the circumstances that are happening around about us? I know that we've got dilemma all over the world, in the Ukraine, in the United States. We've got immigrants pouring into our country every day by the thousands that we don't know what to do with. And unfortunately, it's because of bad decisions from our governmental leaders, just putting it fundamentally where it's at. We've got other issues going on, and we're pouring millions and billions of dollars into Ukraine. We're fighting a guy that is called Vladimir Putin, who is very similar to the rank and file of Adolf Hitler. No regard for life. We're facing issues in our life. We've faced them racially. We've faced them economically. We're facing them in many things in our culture. But we get in the position that we get our focus so much on those things that we get our focus off of the one true living God. You can go through things in life. I have been through. You have been through. We got people in the hospital right now that are going through. We fought tremendous battles, haven't we? We don't deny that. They've been real in our life. But see, we've made a decision whether those things defeat 
or deliver us into a greater walk and relationship with God. We can sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. We can sit around and quit and be defeated. But I'm going to tell you, if you make that decision, that's not, your, not God's decision. It's your decision for you. And if you've made that decision, you can count on it. You're going to probably die in that defeat and self-pity that you're living in. I just conducted a funeral service for a family member, 92 years old, William Brown, this past Friday. William Brown fought through Alzheimer's. He fought through pain and struggle, lost his wife nine years ago. He's got a loving son and two daughters. But you know, he was a man of symbol and the greatest symbol that he showed his family. Days before he passed away, he could not speak nor express his feelings. He couldn't say what was going on in his mind, his heart. So he manipulated his hands and he had difficulty in doing that. And he manipulated his hands into a figure of a heart. There was a canvas in the service of his hands just days before. Where his tears rolled down his eyes to his cheeks, he made that expression. He fought through, but God called him home. He didn't give up and quit. He went through a lot of adversity, a lot of pain. But look around this church. There are people who are alive who have been and are going through a lot of adversity in their life. Sickness and pain and struggle. Problems. Health issues. I'm going to tell you, what you do with those things that you have faced, and just because we flipped the calendar today, and just because at midnight we changed another year, it doesn't necessarily change what you're in. But also, listen to me, it does not change who is with you and who is on your side. For he is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I still believe that God can deliver people from infirmity. Many are the, many are the infirmities, troubles, sicknesses, pains of the righteous. But God delivers him out of them all. Amen. We can live in Christ the hope of glory. Because this is how we live day by day. That's how I lived last year. And that's how I'm going to live this year. I thank my God above that he spared me. Through all the pain and suffering I've gone through, I tell you, God just gave me a refreshing. <laughs> a refreshing that my God is so good awesome and powerful and he today is far greater than whatever you face. You know life can be exciting can it? It really can. You can say amen to that. Even in the difficulties and the trials they are regarded as an adventure. I called it a journey, an adventure whatever you may have called it or calling it, you can name it but the fact is it's a journey of joy. Is it for you today? Or do you sit at home thinking, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. I just don't know how I'm going to overcome this. And you lay in bed at night staring at every sparkle on sparkle or every crack or crevice on the ceiling or on the walls or everything in your bedroom or in your life. And all you do is think about that. And so you go, to, you go to sleep, defeated finally, and you wake up the mo next morning 
And instead of saying, good morning, Lord, you say, good Lord, it's morning. You're living in dread. You're not living in joy. You're trying to survive as our generation loves to use that word. You're trying to get through all the cliches that we use. I'm telling you, life is exciting with God. And today it's a journey of joy. And today you can declare, as Nehemiah declared, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. I said the joy of the Lord, it's my strength. You know the Lord will work all things out. He really will. He will. But you've got to get your mind and today your life and your focus off of you. You are watching right now on Facebook. Some of you are sitting there in that chair on that sofa. Maybe you're even laying in the bed. And all you're thinking about is me, me, me and what I'm going through. I'm going to tell you, you stay in that mentality and you're going to stay just like you are. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I still believe my God can work all things out. But part of working it out is that you've got to get your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your life focused on Him and stop living in the place that you want people to feel sorry for you. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It's just like I said last Friday. I did a live feed after I got home from conducting that memorial service. And I said, you know, you're going to make the choices of where life is going to be for you. And if you want to sit there in self-pity and not get in church and not get in the word and not trust God, then don't expect any changes. Yeah, but I'm just praying that everybody's going to be praying for me. Why don't you get on your wretched knees and start praying for yourself? I'm sorry. I was brought up in toughness. Amen. Sure, I've had valleys and defeat. Ask Drew and Tiff. When I get in, and when I got in, and I'm not going to get in any more of those pity party mentalities. And you know, I tell you what, well, you know what happens? <laughs> I was snapping at them like a turtle. It's coarse and hard in my words and in my attitude. You get that way. And that's all you talk about is how bad you are, how bad off you are, all that you're going through, all that you're facing. I don't know why God's got me on this, but somebody needs it, whether you're sitting in this room or you're watching by TV or you're watching by Facebook, somebody needs it. You know what's going to happen? When people see you coming, they're going to go running. I'm glad I went through what I've gone through. This coming, what is it, day? What day is it, Tiff? Wednesday? I go to uh, VPO. I go to VPO this Wednesday. My outer lining on this leg is starting to rip and tear. Well, I take them off and on every day. But this coming Wednesday, as I sit there for several hours, they're going to fit me with new legs. Amen. Suction based. I talked to uh, Wendell Mason this past week. He said, I'm on that same type. He said, oh, what a difference, and you're going to love it. I thought, man, I just love being alive. I just love being able to stand up. I just love today that I can praise my God. Amen. Yeah, it gets painful. I could sit and cry. Say, I just don't miss it. Get up and walk for Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I got a Leg to stand on. Ooh. Glory. Somebody stand up and shout, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, sit down. I'll never get through this message. Man, God, 
He said, he's taking you on rabbit trails today. No, I don't go on rabbit trails. I go on duck trails, baby. You're going to see shortly part, Paul's word. He used the word rooted, R-O-O-T-E-D. To be rooted means that these things that Paul says have been done, listen, in you and to you. They reside in you. They are rooted. The Holy Ghost is rooted in you. Woo! Rooted in you. Amen. Amen. And if you are born again Christian today, you've been planted in Christ. And today those roots are strong and they'll hold you through the storm and through the valleys because I know it's the Lord who is on my side. Amen. You've also been built up in him. Built up means today you are growing in him. God doesn't put the spirit in you to be dormant. It is to grow. Meaning you are increasing in your faith walk. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I can stand up here. Balance is doing good. Legs are doing good. I'm feeling good. Woo! You have also been strengthened. Your faith today has been tried, tested, and if your faith has been tried and tested, then your faith should be triumphant. And thankfulness, how about that? Learn to be grateful. Stop sitting around griping, complaining. Get up and do something about it. Know today that God is in control, for he is a sovereign God. Go with me to the pages of God's word. Only two verses. I'll try to go quick. I've only got two points. That could be dangerous. Small points could mean a long message. Long points could mean a long message. I guess it's a long message any way you can. You've labeled me with that reputation, so I have to live up to it. If you start saying, boy, that sure was a nice short message you preached today, Pastor. Maybe I start preaching shorter messages. I don't know. But anyway, as you therefore have, listen to this. Now listen, follow it. And if you don't have your Bible with you, just listen. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, what's the next four words? So walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now listen, actually the book of Colossians is a warning and an encouragement. It's a warning against false teaching, false principles, and false gospels. And there's a lot of that out there today. That a lot of people believe in easy believism, prosperity gospels, cultural gospel, cultural Christianity, and all that. And all that mess was belched out of hell. It's an encouragement, however, to trust in the grace of our God and to live today your life for the glory of God. This is a great scripture text as we move into this new year of 2023. Just not for today, just not for January, just not for the first couple of weeks. If God has not come and we're still here next year this time, it's still pertinent. We need strength. We need hope, don't we? We need today the grace of God that is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we need to get this thing right. We need to stop living today in casual Christianity. We need today to be intensified in our walk with God. We need to be focused on Him. We need to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We need, are you listening? We need to be committed to the cause of Christ. To be solid. To be confident. To, 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 to brace ourselves for the year as we walk through it. You know, you do not have to live with dread in your soul. Maybe you're dreading some things that you're facing. You don't have to dread them. God's sovereign. He's going to be there and being in control of it. You can walk through life with confident joy. I didn't say happiness. I have not wished anybody a happy new year. I wish you a blessed new year. And you can trust God's plan. You can trust today God's goodness, can't you? 
You just need to grasp the gospel today and grow in your faith in him. Growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord, Peter said. Try, try to live your life for the glory of God in whatever you're going through. You know, whatever I've been through, I always point up and to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes it's in pain, but to God be the glory. Sometimes it's in the valley of despair, but to God be the glory. Amen. Going through treatments, Derek, Cindy, but what? But to God be the glory, right? You've struggled. You've gone through. You went to the doctor this week, Mr. Donald Ray Brooks. You had a test done, didn't you, last week? Cardiologist. They thought he had some issues going on. Well, let me hear you shout out what the results of that test was. Everything's great. And so we say what? To God be the glory. You don't know, preacher. Oh, yes, I do. I have walked that path. And I can say, I know what it's like, but I can also, you remember that old song, Tony, go where you sing? I know what it's like to walk through the valley. Oh, but I also know what it's like to trust the hand that is leading and trust that hand that will provide and trust that hand that will bring you through. Oh, what a mighty God we serve to God. Be the glory. Amen. I want to convince you to try and to trust him. Try to live your life for the glory of God. Try to trust God's good plan for your life. You say, yeah, is it good when you're going through trouble and trial and sickness? Oh, goodness will come out of it. And we know that all things work together for good to what? To them that love God. It matters not what you face. You can face what you're facing and you can trust God's grace in the darkest shadows of life. I think it's time today that we reject this mentality of casual Christianity. Come to church when you want to. Come to a church when you feel like it. Come to church when you're doing good. No, you need to come to church all the time. And what we need is a life that is saturated by the good grace and glory of our great God. So be assured, God will carry you through this year. What? What now? See, the thing says today, when Christ is my all, all is well. Yeah. We need two things right, and here they are. One, we need to get conversion right. Conversion right get it right. I've heard so many versions of how you get to heaven. There is only one way. What do you mean when you say I'm a Christian? Is it because you wear a Jesus first lapel pin or a cross or something around your neck or something on your clothing? No. It's because you got bumper stickers all over the back of your car saying whatever, whatever about Jesus. Well, if you're going to have it on your car, you better start driving like you know him. Amen. <laughs> Waving to people, one finger don't work. So you've got those bumper stickers on the car. You know what I'm talking about. Sorry, I shoot straight, man. I don't butter it up and I don't just tell it like it is. What did you get when you believed the gospel? Gospel being death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. So often, you know, when we, we talk about when we got saved, well, all we talk about is the benefits of why we got saved or what we got from being saved. No, it's not a prosperity gospel of getting, getting, getting from God. Listen, it's a wonderful thing to be forgiven. Sure, our God will supply our every need, won't he? He's promised us that. But you've got to get that text, Philippians 4.19, in the correct text that it is in. It's not, it's me. Yeah, God does put food on your table, roof on your head, clothes on your back, stuff like that. But listen, there's a, there's a spiritual meaning to this that we need to grasp. We need to understand what God has done for us, that we have forgiveness, that the condemnation and the shame has been lifted. 
knowing that we have experienced a thing in our life today that is called restoration. We have been restored. Having a new start and a new purpose, a new opportunity. Just because we flipped the calendar doesn't mean that we have a new start. We just have a new year, big deal. 365 days, is this leap year? I don't think so. Regardless, it's, it's, it's not the calendar and it's not the clock. It's Christ in you. Amen. If you have and do you live in that new start and that new purpose every day, there's a new start and a new purpose. You get courage for the day and you're given a new family in Christ in salvation. So that being the case, we should be thankful that we're not going to hell. Amen. Amen. That you're not going to hell. Amen. Amen. See, you are going if you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior. But if you are born again and trusted Him, your name is written in heaven. You are just as sure for heaven if you are already walking on the street of gold. Amen. Amen. Nothing can remove that. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. I'm sick and tired of people today taking and watering down the gospel and saying you can lose your salvation. I'm going to tell you what you are. And I'm going to shoot straight right at you. You are a liar. Because you're calling God a liar and you better watch how you do that. If you're going to heaven, it's because you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. And his grace has saved you today. See, it's all about, it's all about not the gift. It's all about the gift giver of who has given it to you. Paul said, as you've received Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, today, listen, he is a revealer today to the church. And we should be thankful to him today. Christ is the answer in the Old Testament prophets. Christ is God. Second person in the triune God. When you receive Christ, you receive the hope of glory that is given to us. When you're saved, you receive Christ, the prophet. You receive Christ, the, the king, the priest. Jesus, the man who hurt and suffered and bled and died and who prayed and cried out. Jesus who walked, the Villa della Rosa. The Jesus who was tempted in our place. The Jesus who was without sin. This man, Jesus, took your sin and mine and nailed it to the cross. Amen. Jesus did all that that God could be just and the justifier. And today we are justified in Christ. Jesus took the consequences we deserved and he turned, turned today and gave us his righteousness and he clothed us with a robe of righteousness. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 and 1. Jesus became a dead man, but God, hallelujah, raised Jesus as a man and gave him life. He is the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man. Then Jesus, our high priest, 40 days later ascended into heaven is seated at, God, at the right hand of God to be our intercessor and our advocate. Woo, I'm glad he's never lost a case. And when you become saved, you receive Christ the Lord into your life. And then after salvation, you need to crown him Lord of your life by your dedication to him. When you say Jesus is Lord, you're saying that Jesus is your king. Well, if he's your king, you better start living for the king. Listen, Jesus has to be your and my pattern in life. You have to have an allegiance to Jesus, the sovereign one, for he is the one who is in control, isn't he? Huh? Isn't he? Yeah, don't get quiet now. I'm trying to wrap it up. He is that Christ, he is that Jesus, he is our Lord. And there's no neutral ground in your life. You know? God wants all of your life. Are you hearing? He wants all of your life for you too that are watching. Surrendered. Say that word with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Surrendered. That is who Jesus has to be because he has to be Lord of all in your life. Being saved is not a punch ticket to a trip to heaven so you don't burn in hell. Salvation is a relationship. When you got saved, you got eternal, 
you got an eternal transfusion. His blood now has purged and cleansed you and now you have become a child of God. We'll live like it then. We have to get conversion right. Second, and I'll make this one sweet and short. We need to get Christianity right. Aren't you loving the message today? Yeah, uh uh-huh. What does it mean to live as a Christian? (laughs) Live in a way that proves you actually are a Christian. How do you do that? How is that accomplished? You must walk. I'll tell you, tell it to you just in one sentence. You've got to walk in his presence. Because his presence is with you at all times. When you're thinking even thoughts, evil thoughts, when you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, when you're laying out on God, He's still there with you. He's still in your presence. You can't shut, say, Jesus, wait outside the door while I go in here and, and down a few or snort a few or whatever. He's with you. I'm telling you, you're in His presence at all times. My God, start living like you are in the presence of God. 2023, you're going to be walking in something and you make the choice of what you're going to walk in. Scripture says walk in Him. Are you? Are you really walking in Him today? Let me help you. Well then what does it mean to walk in Him? What does it mean to make Him Lord of your life? What does it mean to make Jesus first and foremost in your living What does it mean today that you are surrendered and sold out to the cause of the kingdom of God? Paul gives us four metaphors. One, you've got to be rooted as a tree, and so you've got to be planted in Christ. You're secure. If you're planted in Christ, nothing can de-root you. You can't lose what God has put in you. Something happened when you were saved. You got rooted. He became your life. And today we've been pressed down into Christ. And today you belong firmly fixed in Him today. Nothing or no one, no principle, no power, nothing can remove you today. Read Romans 8 and see who you are in Christ. Listen to Psalm 1 and verse 3. You know it probably by heart. But I'm just going to give you a portion of that scripture. And and He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Even when there is a drought in the land, you who are planted in Christ, you will not wither. Amen. Are you rooted today? Is he your source of joy? Is he your source of the hope that resides within you? Is your source Is he the source of your life? Also, we're established in him. We are built in him. He is building our lives in him. We now have a foundation. You can't build a house without a foundation. What happens? There is an illustration or a parable given in the word of God that when you build on the sinking sands of life, you crumble when you build on the rock of your salvation, which is in Christ, you will weather the storm. So God uses the events, whether they're good or whether they're bad, you know, whatever's in your life, he uses those things to build your life. Each brick in life, whether it's a dismal dark time or a bright and sunny time in your life, God is using that to build your life. All of us are today are in a renovation project. You're all in a renovation. He's purging and cleansing and purifying. He's building you up. He's strengthening you. To do that, sometimes God has to tear down things in your life. He has to do and remove things in your life that doesn't glorify Him. Yeah. Then we are established in the faith. We must be people of the book. Amen. The Word of God. We put a sheet out. I wonder how many of you will take it and launch into reading the Bible through this year. I promise you, if you do it, you'll be a changed person. You'll come in here lit up like a Christmas tree. Amen. Perpetually. Not because somebody plugged you in, but because you're plugged into Jesus. Amen. Woo! Good God, that's good. See, if you neglect the Bible this year, you're not going to grow. You're going to be stunted. 
and you'll probably die. And lastly, you are to bound in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. That's just not a day in November. We are to be thankful at all times. We should be overflowing with thanksgiving. Ooh, Lord. Overflowing with thanksgiving. Huh? huh? Overflowing with thanksgiving. Amen. Even in the times when it's dark, terrible, and the shadows of life come upon us and they're bad, we still give thanks to God. In all things, we give you thanks. Job said, even if you slay me, I still will praise you. Because see, thanksgiving is a form of praise before God. Are you praising him? Come on. Are you praising him? Amen. One final scripture, Habakkuk 3 says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall, shall fruit be on the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall have yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. You say, that sounds like gloom, despair, preacher. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. And agony on me. <laughs> Deep, dark depression. <laughs> excessive misery. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. Amen. So you're in the valley. Praise God anyway. So you're going through dark, deep times. Throw, even though the doctor has said something about your health that is not good, still you stand up and you rejoice in the Lord your God. Amen. You haven't caught that yet. I pray you will. When Christ is your all, all will be well. Question, are you born again? Question, are you walking in Christ? Question, are you living for Jesus? Question, are you struggling? Give it all. Give it all to him today. Come. And he said, all that will come to me, I'll in no wise cast out.